You have got to be kidding me. You have got to be joking. Here we are, in the final moments of waiting for this ba like baby Tasmanian devil to go ahead and, and grow up so that we can release her to the wild and give ourselves a firm pat on the back as we go ahead and wrap our arms around that golden kiwi statue and make a run for it. And what happens? The very last animal that we need in order to complete this challenge just lost her mother. She technically just became an orphan because her dad doesn't have anything to do with raising her. And now here we have our Tasmanian devil mother having passed away suddenly. Lilardia, I'm so... I, I would say sorry. I don't even know. She died of old age. Why are all of my animals dying of old age? Like the quokka, the, the little penguins became, like, well, they didn't die of old age, but they became too old, like, early on before they could go ahead and breed. Just how long can the animals that we have actually collected from across the oceanic adventures, how long can they live? Because it doesn't seem like it's very long. It seems like it's kind of brief and fast. Uh, let's see. Okay, where where does it say how long we... we okay, lifespan? 6.5 years. So to be fair, our Tasmanian devil did indeed actually go ahead and survive a, a fair amount of time for a Tasmanian devil. Now, what about the quokka? How long does the quokka live? 10 years. Okay, okay. And they can keep having babies until they die, but 10 years doesn't feel like as long as I wish we had with our quokka, and I could have sworn that a few of them have been dying at eight. Maybe we need to go make sure that we're adding the proper, like, nutrients and food to, to their piles of food. Uh, what about the little penguins? So, like, w what about them? 20 years! But they, they stop- what? <laughs> okay, hold up. So, this is very unique in the animal world, because usually, in most species, I would hesitate to even say, you continue having offspring until you're dead. Like, evolution's outlook is like, yo, that's the point of being alive. Hey, pass on those genes. That That's a huge pressure that we have in the evolution of all the species on the planet. So it's very uncommon to find species who continue to have a viability in age after they no longer can reproduce. However, the species that we usually see that in have social groups that benefit from having a knowledgeable, usually matriarch, uh, in the group. So uh, orcas, for instance, whales, a lot of different whales will keep around the older females. They'll, they'll live a long, long, long time past when they can breed because they actually help their daughters, their granddaughters, their great granddaughters in some cases, with being able to have their territory, to be able to learn how to do the hunting, how to interact with the other pods of whales. We also see that with, um, oh my gosh, the hummingbird just flew by my window again. Aren't you supposed to be gone? It's like autumn now. Wow. Sorry, distracted. But we also see that with different primate species. We see that with elephants. We see that with humans. So why does a little blue penguin who stays in small social groups stay alive for 10 years after their sexual sterility. That's really unusual. And everything I've read about how they interact usually indicates that they aren't exactly like helping each other survive. Is it kind of like a school of fish philosophy where the more penguins, then perhaps you like, <laughs> you have less competition for burrows and maybe a heightened chance of the older ones being the ones pecked off because they're getting slower by all the predators. That's an interesting question to understand like what what evolutionary quirk made it so that it's beneficial for these guys to live that long. It doesn't have to be anything dramatic. It could just be like a mutation that carried on, but it's just fascinating to see that. All right. So, well, that's the quokka. Little blue penguins apparently <laughs> <laughs> you could almost get four little blue penguin life uh, spans out of like a ta like or no four Tasmanian devil life spans out of one little penguin lifespan. So they see the rise and fall of a lot of devils, and then the quokka. You know you could get you could get about two quokka out of a little blue penguin. But what about the spectacled flying foxes? 
So they can live up to 16.5 years and they reach sexual sterility at about 11 years of age. So again, not a huge gap between when they can no longer have children and then when they happen to pass away. Enough that that's intriguing and interesting. I wonder if it has something to do with maybe uh, the females or males getting older and their gametes no longer being as fresh and, and healthy. Because the older you get, the less likely you have healthy offspring in most species. So that's the flying fox, that's the little penguin, that's the quokka, that's the Tasmanian devil, and finally we have the kiwi. <gasps> Fire phoenix is expecting offspring! Oh, I love that so much. Um, the kiwi, 30 years. So the kiwi, and can live up to 60 in captivity by the way, the kiwi runs circles around all of these and they also have unknown sexual sterility. How old is the oldest kiwi to ever lay an egg? We need to see if there has been scientific data collected on that because I am extremely curious. Uh, also, <laughs> for a little Tasmanian devil female. <laughs> oh, hang in there, little one. I'm so sorry that life has been the way it has for you. And I find it, again, very amazing that we just need to wait for her to grow up so we can release her to the wild. She's literally the last, last, last of the projects we're doing here. And also, maybe we'll go ahead and say, nope, we don't need any of that. We don't, we're, we're good on lemurs, actually. In fact, now we don't need to worry about any of the lemurs having any more babies. So we could just wiggle on over here and actually... <laughs> I could actually select all of the lemurs and we no longer have to worry about like having any more babies. Ooh, look! And our little tapir has grown up too. I mean, ironically, we could have this tapir. No, no, we, we never mind. We released a female tapir into the wild. Uh, oh, very healthy tapir baby though. Man, I cannot wait for us to have our own island so that I can really settle in and keep things for years and years and years and years to come. And yes, actually, we could release Anala the little penguin and finish everything up, but she's already almost not able to have babies of her own, apparently. <laughs> and she's the only little blue penguin we've had born here because all of the others were old. So I'm okay with waiting until we go ahead and we have the Tasmanian devil grow up. Just because. Just because. Uh, but all right, let's come through all of you guys. No more babies. There. That's probably going to make everybody a lot happier. All right, so... <laughs> Wow, you know, at least this gives us a chance to go ahead and check in on Saffron. Saffron, how you doing? 20 years old, she's looking beautiful, and she'll give us a chance to ask how old uh, has the kiwi who, uh, how old has the oldest kiwi to lay eggs been? Let's see. That's kiwi breeding season. Let's see. We can live between 25 to 50 years. How old? Maybe how old is the oldest mother kiwi? Is that going to give me an answer? Hmm. Unfortunately, that actually gives me a bunch of information about how there are like 65 year old women in New Zealand because they, they also go by kiwi. I forgot. <laughs> for people um, who have had children. So that didn't answer my question, but that might be an arena of science that I would really love to like see if anybody has answers on. Cause I do believe they have some Kiwi breeding programs here and there and probably keep track of some of the wild populations of Kiwi, but maybe no one has tracked them long enough to see like if, you know, a 50 year old Kiwi is able to go ahead and lay eggs. I find that quite fascinating. All right, let's see what's going on over here. Well, I, you were, okay. I was making a little food thing uh, in the interest of our little Tasmanian devil. Uh, that's Bam Bam, so that's her dad. Now he's elderly. He's probably, she's about to be an orphan. Are we literally going to have an orphan as the last of the animals that we have here? Well, can I at least give her, like, some more treats and things? Are we researching the Tasmanian Devils? Because maybe, maybe I can at least give her some treats for her trouble. All right, good. We're researching them a little bit. Thank, thank you, Northheart. I really appreciate that. I, I feel for this little one. Can we get her anything else? <gasps> the pinata! I love the pinatas. They're so hilarious.
hilarious. I love naming these after some of you guys too, because then you can be like, oh no, watch out, Wolf Lover 99.2. Like, you're about to get chomped by the tiny Tasmanian devil, and actually that's gonna hurt more than it sounds like it will. <laughs> Ooh, and Fire Phoenix! Baby! Kiwi! That's a lot of red pandas, am I supposed to have that many? Probably not. Probably not. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that was so cute. Did you see that kiwi just come out of the burrow? I would, I would just die. If I watched a kiwi come out of its burrow, it would just be so freaking cute. I would just kill right over. All right, all right, are we getting comfy? Oh my gosh, another kiwi came out of a burrow. Do I need more burrows? How many kiwi do we have over here? Fire Phoenix, you have like, you have like so many children. You have such a big family now. I'm so happy for you. <gasps> She's coming into the burrow. Oh my gosh. Okay, hang on. Uh, kiwi parenting. I'm trying to remember. Oh, no, I need kiwi bird parenting for crying out loud. <laughs> I do appreciate that there's an entire country that goes ahead and, um, that goes ahead and focuses on calling themselves. Ah, there's one of the babies. Yay, another new kiwi baby. Good job. Good job, Fire Phoenix. I'm very happy to welcome yet another itty bitty little one in here. Uh, we'll also go ahead and let your daughter, who we never quite gave a name, be released to the wild just so that she doesn't cause problems with your other two daughters and son. Look at all of these babies. They must have just been laying an egg every single breeding season, possibly. Let's check how old everyone is. So... This female right here is 2.3 years old, and now she has... Yeah, oh, she had a, a sister, I think. Hold up here. Uh, that's Monty, I wanna see Monty. Okay, so 2.3, followed by Monty, you were literally just born. And then we also have Dariana. Yep, the one year. So 2.3, one, and just hatched. <laughs> So actually, there are quite a few, uh, like every breeding season, they've had a new kiwi baby. Congratulations, you guys. I can't wait, again, to be able to memorialize you and your little family tree uh, when we get to my own island. What is happening? Oh my gosh. Is everybody okay? Uh, uh, one minute. I have no idea. <gasps> what do you mean she just died of starvation? Excuse me? Uh, cursed. Absolutely cursed. I need a lie down now. I can't believe that just happened. What? She, but she just, egg. She was only 13. No, no, that's, no, I refuse. That's it! I'm leaving this cursed island and I'm, I'm taking my golden kiwis! Oh my gosh! I don't know what happened! Uh, do we just not have a keeper coming enough? Is everybody starving? Everyone looked like they were doing fine! Did she just... like... I don't understand! One second everything was fine and the next second like everything slowed down and it... I mean it, maybe it was like those dramatic moments in, in movies or whatever where time slows to a crawl and then something horrible happens. I very much dislike that! And now, like, Marley has just matured, but her mother just died, so run, run, Marley, run. I'm gonna send you away. What just happened? I don't have any frame of reference for that. I am not a happy bean. No, I was just, no, I was just praising her and saying what a good kiwi she was. Little one. Little Devil. I'm gonna name you Little Devil. Let's get you aged up. We're almost there. And now I'm really dubious about this entire operation. And and in honor of Fire Phoenix the Kiwi having <laughs> having unexpectedly passed away, which I am, to be honest, a little bit toasty about. Like, do I have a volcano? Because Okay, I have old volcanoes. I don't have like new volcanoes with the new stuff. I'm not, I'm not okay with that. Like, how did she starve? Did she not have enough earthworms? Cause she was too busy 
rocking all those babies? Is this what you get with the consequence of, of not being able to go ahead and... I just... Like... I... Is that the consequence that you happen to have? If you, if you end up having too many eggs year after year? No, it's what happens when there's just a hiccup. I am so sad about this. And yet, we must do something with this sad emotion, right? We must, we must go on because we're almost there. I'm, and I mean, everything's like permanent and I just, oh, okay, let's see, let's see. Well, I, I, I think I'm gonna, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to build a, a small volcano whilst we wait for this. Oh, wow, there's so many beautiful blueprints. Oh my gosh, you guys. People on the galleries. Why do they make such amazing things? Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be really fun once we can start like really keeping stuff around because this is, this is awesome. Oh my gosh, look at that lighthouse. I forgot about the lighthouse. Yeah, lion den. Okay, too big. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll stop messing around. It's just there was a lot of cool stuff to suddenly look at. Oh. Fire Phoenix. I sort of feel like I need a, a very scary, morbid <laughs> little, little like volcano now instead of our cute little hula thing that I was building. I'm still gonna finish this off and we're gonna like have all of the, the little animal totems like down here. We'll have little music playing. Maybe we'll even have some like habitat education buried in here and maybe even donation bins, who knows? But like, Hi guys. Did I just see a quokka jump off of the back of a Galapagos tortoise? Because that makes me feel a little bit better. But I I don't know what to say. Other than I'm sorry. <laughs> like I it just it just happened really quickly. Um and I, ironically it does make me want to come over here. It does make me want to make a volcano. Where and I'm just over here because it's fun to watch like all the tortoises. Look, there's a tapir baby. We have some some fun things to look at whilst we make a volcano where I might make like a threatened little kiwi. It might be a tiny volcano. <gasps> it could even be a heater. Oh, I love being able to make really adorable like thematic builds out of these teensy tiny new items that we have. Uh, let's see, because we could make like a tiny little pool of lava down here. And I like that. And if we raise it up a little, what would be about even with a guest? Eh, we want him to be able to look into it a bit. There we go. <laughs> and I guess while we wait for the devil, the devil baby to grow up <laughs> so that we can leave, I, I will memorialize Fire Phoenix, who I was literally just praising. She's such a good, like, like, wow, look at how many eggs she has. She and her mate, they mate for life, you know? Do you know how devastating that's gonna be? Well, let's see. Just as I was praising them. Poof! That was the end of that. All right. Because I'm thinking, what if we do this, friends? What if to really, you have to, you have to be emotionally evocative with your guests sometimes. And it's not because you want to falsely pull on their emotional heartstrings, but every now and then you need people to realize like how how perilous it can be for the wild creatures of our world. In fact, I think we're gonna make it even look a little spooky. We're gonna make it super perilous. Also, hello to Pierre. I do need to spend more time with all of you. I I also I hear you too, little little penguin. I know. I need to spend more time with you too. You know, I should probably turn off the rotation if we're gonna do it like this and try to make it look all like fangs. But still, I wonder if I should call this like the devil's sacrifice and it's gonna be, hold up, because I'll show you guys in just a second what I'm thinking of. All right, there's like a start of an idea and I think I'm even gonna make the rocks, the skinnier rocks to kind of make this even tighter of a little pool of lava. But we have this, right? And then what if? We have the poor, imperiled kiwi. The little sacrifice, the little kiwi sacrifice. At risk. There we go. Over this lava chasm. How are we gonna do that? Well, let me see. I wonder, is there like a little plank? 
can we put like a little tiny bridge and then then this is this is our bid to be like hurry and donate now <laughs> to save the itty bitty teeny tiny little kiwi and now bam bam is dying of old age and legitimately actually making an orphan out of uh out of our little devil what a what a sad life this itty bitty little devil who we did name little devil has like this is this is this is rough stuff for her uh, yes another animal died i still i saw i saw all right let's see and then little kiwi it's kind of like a version of like the kiwi walks the plank is what i'm thinking all right and i'm wondering if we should use this one well this one keeps it kind of playful to be honest <laughs> I don't want to make it like too dramatic, but I'm just thinking how interesting it would be. Let's see, wall, floor, roofs and floors. Do we have a little like bridge pattern? That's the planks. Actually, I do think that with the arrival of the Oceana pack, we have some really interesting, there we go. Yeah, look at this, the little driftwood pieces. Oh my gosh, we actually have a plank plank. <gasps> It's perfect. It's perfect for what I was thinking of. Oh my gosh. Okay. Here's the idea. The poor little Kiwi walks the plank. And in order to save him, you too must go ahead and figure out a way to contribute to like wildlife protection and research. Oh my gosh. Everything. No! <laughs> uh... Yeah, you may wonder, why don't you just make things go faster, Siri? Why don't you just fast forward? Why do you sit through doing this to yourself? Because I would have never thought to make something where it looks like a teensy tiny kiwi, uh, like Saffron, like, it, she has grandchildren now, and this kiwi is still going. Saffron's only 20. She's very young for a kiwi, and her daughter should have had so many more years with us, and yet here we are, right? So we need answers to the questions of, but why? And I wonder if we should have, like, a little driftwood piece? Or maybe we should just, like, hide all of this under some lava rock. I think we'll hide all of it under some lava rock. Poor kiwis. Alright. But yes, this is exceptionally silly. However, I just kind of love the idea <laughs> of, of, like, adding a spicy bit of drama to our little zoo and maybe we'll have like some playful little music and maybe kids will have to be like do some silly little thing where it's like all right guys say kiwi and the kiwi won't fall in the fire pit or something <laughs> maybe that's a little too intense but i remember really weird little things like that from when i grew up like and you'd go to places and they do cringy things to get the kids to laugh and even then i'd be like am i supposed to laugh at this really you're gonna make me Ugh. but now that i'm older i, I kind of get it like, if you can just get somebody engaged for even the silliest little thing, and it can be the beginning of what makes the difference for keeping them interested. There we go. Maybe on the back. <laughs> Maybe we'll just, like, turn this part into sort of like a, a cute little plant zone to kind of balance out the scariness. Oh my gosh, it's actually coming together. What is this? <gasps> Quokka sleeping behind my volcano. <laughs> uh, ooh, and we could even have like some of the lava sort of running off of the side. I didn't think about that, but we really could. And making a lava pool down here. Oh my gosh, I love that. That's actually really cool. And again, if we hadn't been waiting for this itty bitty little devil to grow up, I would not have bothered. There we go. Then we'll do maybe... Yeah, we don't want to make it too big, but maybe one of these. And then, I wonder, can I get like one of, like how big? Are you always going to be that big? What about this one? Hmm. Wow. Note to self, the lava flow, actually a lot more fun to play with than you would think it would be. But then again, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. When Chips and I went to Hawaii, like the... One of the problems with seeing the lava was that it did look kind of fun. 
like where, where you'd see it off in the distant fields, you would think like, huh, I wonder what would happen if you poked it with a stick, which is not something you should ever do ever, ever, ever. But it just, it does look enticing. So maybe we're do actually doing a very important public service announcement, making this so that we can teach everybody like fire hot, lava, really hot fire, no touch, no sticks. All right, let's see. I think that that is the beginning of something kind of amazing. I can't believe we did this. <laughs> and actually I'm beginning to think instead of the sculpture, what if what we put over here was actually the Kiwi statues? Because I think the Kiwi statues stand out just a touch more for this. All right and kind of look pretty good and then we could name the kiwi statues after various people and it's the kiwis that are like walking the plank they gotta watch out i actually love that i i really truly do <laughs> what that says about me well i'm just gonna kind of leave that like lingering uh but you have to watch out for this poor little kiwi Maybe we won't use the bronze one because it's hard to see. We do have the silver and eventually we can add in the gold. And we also have just the normal stone kiwi. Hmm, you know what? Actually, I do think it was cuter though. Yeah, that actually suits it better because this will make it so maybe it won't be quite as scary for the various children's and whatnots. Uh, Alright, so now that that's done, how can we make it even more interesting? Can I? Well, I don't think I could hide a bench over there. Good good job for you, by the way, Saffron, having more children. Uh, why are you in a box? My elderly lemur? I know why. I know why. Because uh, it's here. Because we're here. Uh, all right. Well, I'm actually super happy with how this has turned out, to be completely honest with you. And I think we can even make this... Oh my gosh, can I make this like a... Okay, you can make this a tour point if you wanted to. That's so cute. Um, ooh, could I put something in? Oh my gosh, I could put something in for the kids. Where they could maybe hear, like, the sounds that the animals make. That's amazing. I think I'd have to put, like, this on top of it, but that would be so much fun. Ooh, the ambient speakers. Okay. Can I somehow, maybe I'll hide these over here so I can finally like edit them and see them. And then we'll put in an educational speaker. And then I think I can even sneak in like a habitat, edu like habitat board for various animals so that people are gonna have to learn whether they like it or not. And I'll try to leave it down past the rocks a little, just a tiny bit so that I can maybe get in there to like change what it says in the future and then we'll hide these under some rocks in just a second and where is my music there's my music because we're going to be rocking this situation you see all right let's see do i have like really dramatic music that sounds like we're about to sacrifice this kiwi to some sort of like horrible fate well Let's put it somewhere where we have power and we can go ahead and see. Let's... Did I want to just merge all of that? Maybe we'll go ahead. And I'm just going to copy it for a second. There we go. All right, little devil. I have now had time to make a sacrificial kiwi volcano. Are you ready to potentially grow up, my dear? Let's check on the little devil in just a second. I want to see if we can give this thing some dramatic music. That... Because we do have some new music with the Oceanon. Uh, walk like a quokka, kiwis at ease, foxes in flight. Hmm. Is that gonna... Hmm. That's probably the closest we're going to get to what sounds like some sort of sacrifice music for Kiwi. What is happening? Why? What? What? Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on. I hope you're all freed from the chaos. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Well, at least we've got like this much going on. And there's an educational speaker that we can go ahead and put in. And what kind of by the beach, underwater, splashing about the swamp. Do you think 
swamp would also happen to sound like lava. Oh my gosh, I should get the Minecraft sound for like lava. Yeah, that doesn't sound like lava, but... Oh, that's because I... Ah. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. And now, oh, Voskri is about to die of old age. Jeez, oh, at 26. Oh no. <laughs> now I have to get out of here before we have even more Kiwi sacrifices. This is just too much. Let's check in on our little devil and see if she's ready. Because I think we're about good here. The only things that would be missing are that I kind of want to. Oh, or what if, oh, I kind of like the Kiwi walking the plank. But the, what if instead of a plank, we had a Kiwi like, at risk, about to step off of this little branch into potential trouble. That also might be kind of adorable, but I think walking the plank is a little bit more dramatic and quite cute, so we will leave that there. And then, now that I have managed to get myself thoroughly, completely, and utterly distracted, oh my gosh, I love these king palms. They're gonna go everywhere. You're gonna see, or these king ferns. You're gonna see them, like, everywhere, guys. I, I hope that all of us are just ready to accept this reality. These giant palm trees, the silver ferns, which I still need to talk about because they're actually really a big part of New Zealand culture. I think we might leave it like this for now so that we can customize and cover it up with the plants as we go. So there we go. Merge into group, group kiwi sacrifice. Facility without power. Everything's falling apart. I'm going to say we need to leave this island because a volcano is literally erupting and we'll have to relocate our entire facilities elsewhere as soon as this tiny baby Tasmanian devil grows up. <laughs> oh my goodness. But until then, I'm going to need to go ahead and put in like another staff lounge. I, I love, to be honest, I really truly love this... Um, this little setup that we have. We've made some really fun, like some truly, honestly, really fun little builds just while having to twiddle our thumbs and wait, which is why I said it's not always a bad thing. It actually can be quite exciting and quite cute and fun. There we go, Kiwi. We'll educate people about Kiwi. We can come on over here, yell at people about Kiwi from the speaker, and then we can even change the color of the kiwi in memorial of different types of kiwi, like for instance, Fire Phoenix, who I feel should go ahead and have maybe like this, this sort of tone. See, this is gonna be so fun. Sacrificial kiwi volcanoes and other things you never, ever, 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 ever thought you would make. <laughs> I wonder if I could even slip in like some other things for the guests in here just to just to make it like extra chaotic. Oh, I love that. All right. Well, okay. And then we can put in a bunch of different nature pieces to hide things. My poor guest. All right, guys, look, the, the volcano is going to explode. So we should get you all out of here very, very soon. I promise everyone's gonna be so much happier if I could potentially relocate everybody to a, another, um, another wonderful tropical island. This one doesn't happen to have an outbreak of, say, like, dinosaurs the way that some might. But probably we'd all be happier elsewhere. Just saying. All right, let's see. What if I put this one? All right, guys, this is going to be fun. I can, I can sense it. Like, look how cute this can be. Let's see, nope, not that one. Uh, that's definitely not gonna work, oh my gosh. All right, the kiwis are maturing. <sighs> We're still waiting for the, the little kiwi, or the little uh, devil. Yes, I'm being this stubborn. Normally I would like have left with, and just built quietly by myself, but I know any second now she's gonna grow up. And as soon as I go ahead and I try to step to the side, also this is fun. Like, look at all these cool plants. Maybe not those custard apples though, but like, oh, these cute little palms. When did you guys get here? Are you guys new? Oh, they're so adorable. I love them. 
I very much am a fan of like palm leaves, palm trees. Maybe it's because, oh, did that just move in the wind too? Oh, good gravy. I never noticed that before and it's so cute. All right, I'm a big fan. Whoops. Well, I didn't mean to put one there, but you know what? Maybe it's like a dandelion. Nature just finds a way. There we go. All right, there you go, there you go. If you want to be, if you want to be on the side of a volcano, who am I to stop you? And then, yep, we'll have fun. All right, that's it. Now, I, 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 as much as I have been saying I can be patient, is my is my Tasmania devil done yet? Little devil, little devil, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. I have now legitimately, oh my gosh. Look, little, little, oh my, no, she's so tiny. <laughs> Why do we have to be, she's literally orphaned. Why? Why does this have to be so sad? Oh my gosh. All right, guys, I'm going to work on like tweaking a little of this and that. And we'll have to see what kind of treasures we ended up with after we are done with Kiwi Island. And I'll be back in just a moment. Well, actually, we're going to start Kiwi Island. This, this island, this is the Goodwins Island. And good luck, I say. The moment is finally upon us. The moment is finally upon us. Oh my gosh, did she literally just leave the burrow? All right, where are you? Where are you, my dear? I'm so sorry you're hungry. If it helps, I just finished making like a tiny little like food spot where hopefully your food will go ahead and be delivered over here in the future. And um, like there's there's actually a little food tray. See the shiny food tray right inside? Pretty proud about that. I have to admit that, oh dear, please tell me that wasn't her. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna miss you, little guaga. I'm so sorry. Also, that would be traumatizing for anybody in the viewing dome right now. But holy cows. Holy little Tasmanian devils. We finally made it. We finally made it. And with the volcano of Goodwin Island exploding, with the Kiwi volcanic sacrifices, the totems uh, having their own little luau around what will hopefully be our trio of statues, a Tasmanian devil little diner that we just finished building, and the, um, the other little bits and bobs, like the blowhole that we made. Oh my gosh, she just decided to take out this entire antelope. Aren't you so strong? So tough and strong that you're definitely all grown up now, right? All grown up now. Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? I can't blame her. She's hungry. So the fact that we just made this adorable little devil liner and she wanted to go ahead and eat first, can't blame her. She needs a nice full meal. She's she's accomplished a lot, little devil. For the fact that, you know, she's an orphan. I think she's like on the very edge of our zookeeper's awareness. So I don't think they come in here very often, <laughs> to say the least. And now, okay. She's going to she's going to destroy that again. And now now Wait, did you literally grow up and you're just still that same size? Or cuz I can release you to the wild now, I think, but you still look about the same size to me. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Is she literally going to be like a tiny itty bitty little devil? Also, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to give this the name of a devil's diner. It's so much fun to see like what random projects we end up creating that, um, yeah, I put a little dirt cloud in there because I just love those little effects that we end up creating just while we're trying to go ahead and accomplish our little projects. All right, come on. Literally, <laughs> your appetite is the thing of legends, my dear. But can we please, can we please go ahead? Wow, just how much can they eat in one sitting, actually? I feel like, oh, and I think we just 100%ed the Tasmanian Devil research just in time. That's so funny. But how much can a Tasmanian Devil actually eat in one sitting? Because they are known to be extremely territorial. <gasps> Finally! And we're done! We're here! With the sacrifice of a final kiwi uh, to the kiwi volcano, we have accomplished with a devilish glint in our eye our goal, our mission our desire to go ahead and be able to celebrate with the golden kiwi you guys ready for this are you ready for this oh wait i have to release her <laughs> oh, i didn't want to stare at a bunch of her food while we did it i wanted to go ahead <gasps> and we've done it the golden kiwi statue 
just in time to escape this island, as I imagine that it goes down in uh, volcanic flames after we safely evacuate everyone and everything off of it. Don't worry. <clears throat> oh my goodness, this is even more amazing than I'd hoped, than we'd hoped. Bernie loves it too. I mean, you know he's a bit of a teddy bear and gives out praise like candy at Halloween, but I don't think I've seen him this ecstatic about how a project turned out in a very long time. I don't think it hurt having the kiwis in there and flourishing so well. Between you and me, they're my dad's favorite animal. He was cleaning out a kiwi enclosure when he first met my mom, so he's always associated them with meeting his true love. <gasps> That's so cute! That is so cute! Oh my gosh! And we did it, you guys. We did it. Now, if we wanted, we could go ahead and we could keep ourselves tucked in here. Uh, but, you know, volcano exploding. We're going to go ahead. This is only, like, my second... Or I think it's my third golden statue. <laughs> so this feels like a big accomplishment for me. And I am very happy about that. And it's so amused at the things that we have ended up creating to go ahead and uh, celebrate the accomplishment of getting these kiwi. But here we go. So, thank you guys. Uh, since this is now an evacuation measure, I would uh, appreciate if all of you could please get onto the uh, the boats. We're gonna be getting out of here. However, if you would like to join us and our pirate crew at the next wonderful vacation destination full of kiwi, never fear, then uh, all you need to do is go ahead and check out where Kiwi Island is hopefully going to begin in our franchise adventures, which you guys know I'm partial to because then they stay as legacy and zoos for us for Ever. And I get to go ahead and swap animals with some of you guys. Next, no, darn it. Okay, we got to get out of here before my heart breaks anymore. And especially some of our patrons who sometimes we do a little animal swapping uh, on the animal market with. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, this is um, this has been this has been a lot of fun. And hopefully, on our next island adventure, we will have a even more delightful time. And I can show you the haul that we have made of the various miscellaneous creations that we whipped together while we were here. So, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!